What's up guys, I'm Kyle at Fortune Off-Road and in this video we're checking out some double shear heim steering for the YJ. So a few videos ago, I talked about all the things we've been doing to the Jeep and why it's just been driving so well. There is one thing I want to get fixed on this and it's uh, basically to just make the steering more robust so I don't have to worry about it. A few videos ago, we also changed out the steering box and the steering arm and I'll talk about that here in a second. All those changes made the steering really vulnerable to the rocks and I have almost everything I need to convert over to Himes. I just need to get the Heim joints themselves. I found a good deal on them. Let's do it. Threw on this Chevy Astro box. Right away, you can tell there's something weird about this. If you've got a Jeep, YJ, TJ, CJ, the steering arm, the pitman arm, it actually faces back there, but you can see the problem. If I did that, it would be directly above my diff. Now, I did have some bump stops, made sure it didn't hit my diff, but even there, you can see the pin that was on the bottom was still scratching it up a little bit, and I decided to swap it out. So, the Chevy Astro box is cool because it just bolts right up. All the same bolts right there, and it goes in. That is one of the things I love about the off-road community. These guys are just so resourceful. Before they made all these cool parts for us to use, these guys had to make them themselves or find other vehicles that already had it. So this swap has been great. This box was already tapped for hydraulic assist. I've got my hydraulic ram on there. It's been going great. So as you can see, there's one thing that's a downfall for this and that is how low Pittman arm is going down. All the steering is very vulnerable. You can see I've hit it on some rocks here, there, and the drag link's taking some good hits there. The cool thing is this is all pretty flat. So the steering and all that on the street is great. And I don't want to change that up. This is just hanging down too low so how do i fix that well one thing i thought about doing was putting like a big guard right here but that's not really going to help because i can still get hit from the bottom and you know this is pretty thick metal this is all pretty thick metal but i think what i'm going to do is swap this over to some heim joints now the difference between heim joints and the tie rod end is pretty significant let me grab one i'll show you what it looks like so here is one of the tie rod ends this is actually a replacement one this is supposed to go on the other end of the drag link i believe to go into the tie rod right there the problem with these is this boot number one if these get cracked or worn out they can basically just trap a bunch of gunk in there and you can see this one on my pitman arm is all cracked up and it needs to be replaced once that happens usually these rod ends are no good too but these things are all like 25 to 50 dollars a piece especially the big one on that end but i have had a lot of failures with tie rod ends haven't had any with the heim joints okay so a heim joint looks like this everything's nice and in line there's not a lot of leverage put on these like there is with this like there's a ball in there and when i'm moving this back around you know it's really got a lot of leverage on this now if you were to just lay this on there you can see it's a little bit closer to the pitman arm but the thing about these is you can see they don't have a lot of misalignment on there so you have to run some misalignment spacers the other problem is if i run this up here to try to get some more clearance it's not going to have enough movement to articulate with the axle and if i try to put those misalignment spacers on there it's going to be too tall and it's going to hit the steering box so you know i could bend this arm down what i decided to do was swap back to my yj drop pitman arm you can see here this arm has already been drilled out to to seven eighths and I have an insert in there that I need to weld in there and then grind down. This takes it from seven eighths to three quarters because even though this is a seven eighths hole in the middle, when we use the misalignment spacers, it's gonna reduce it down to three quarter. So this is kind of how I'm thinking it's gonna work. I'm gonna have this drop pitman arm on there. And as you can see, it's gonna go down like right to where this tie rod end is. So I can't really put it on there where it needs to go, but it drops me down just a little bit. I can put these misalignment spacers on there. They just go right inside of the hind end there. And it looks like that. That allows you to get a bunch more rotation out of this. So fortunately, we're pretty much neutral, so we can just get to maximize all the angle there. So my plan is to put it on like that, then get a piece of metal that is going to lay over the top of it. Now, I've seen a lot of people just run them like this, single shear, the bolt's just going through, and it's, once again, it's a lot of leverage on that bolt. But if we get a plate, just lay it across here, I feel like that's going to be a lot stronger. And then we can box in the side a little bit, especially this side, since we're not going to use most of this. And then we'll try to box in a little bit of that side too, and then this bolt will be 
captured on the top and the bottom and it'll be double shear. Hopefully that'll be a little bit stronger hitting the rocks too. I'm gonna try to put some more um, metal all around this and just make it a little bit stronger. All right, we started shaping this arm a little bit, getting it ready for the Himes getting stacked on there. Put that insert in there and then I welded the other side, ground it smooth and then we'll see how that lines up. We may need to weld this side too and then run a three quarter bit through there to smooth it out, but process is started. So here's a good look at one of the problems I was running into. These Pittman arms are keyed. So if you look at the keys in there, this one, you line it up just like top to bottom. This is the uh, YJ Pittman arm, and this is an Astro Pittman arm on this side. So these are both with the master splines lined up top to bottom, and you can see they're not perfectly straight. This Pittman arm on this side is really crooked. So on the Jeep, this would be pointing towards the driver's side tire, and that's the problem I was running into. Because it's so far angled towards the driver's side, I was really limited on my left turn. So when I'm turned towards driver, it would max out real quick because you know this angle, there's a lot of movement in the steering knuckle, but once you get towards the end, it's actually not moving the tires that much. And it, my options were either lengthen the drag link and have my steering equal in both directions or have my steering wheel straight and not be able to turn all the way to the left. So that's finally what made me want to switch over to this time joint steering because I already had all the parts, all I needed to order were the heim joints and the misalignment spacers but the tube adapters the pitman arm the steel everything else i already had so time to move forward with it so when i was running the astro pitman arm it just comes straight off which is cool i had the tie rod end on the bottom that has been fine i haven't really hit it on anything and i think generally the tie rod ends are stronger than just a regular heim joint but the problem there is there's no way to protect that tie rod end i mean it's just going to be down there in the rocks getting hit so that is why i decided to do all this and this is what the uh, Pittman arm looks like now. Basically, it's just what I said. Uh, it's a drop Pittman arm, right? So it's got the bend in it. And then I cut out that steel plate for both sides. That's what it looks like. It's uh, nothing fancy. This is all 3 16 steel and just MIG welded this on there. And, um, and this thing probably weighs twice as much as it used to, which is part of the goal, right? I wanted this to be a little bit stronger than the old Pittman arm because it was just straight and it was really hanging down. This one's a little bit shorter. So I'm hoping the steering will be a little bit more or closer to the rate at which the ram wants to push and pull so i'm going to clean this thing up and uh see if there's anything else we need to add on it i don't think so i think this thing's looking pretty beefy now but uh, we will need to get some paint on there start measuring everything out but this is 3 16 and on the top it's two layers of 3 16 so 3 8 i think this thing's going to be beefy enough to handle this So since the knuckles are already seven eighths, I had to get this spacer to take it to back down to three quarter. So it's just the seven eighths of three quarter. I only ordered two because I thought I was gonna need it for the drag link side only, but turns out I need them in both the knuckles. I forgot those are both drilled out to seven eighths to take a tapered tie rod end insert. So the chances of finding that at the hardware store were pretty slim. So what I did is I found one that was the same seven eighths outside diameter and then just cut it down to size and reamed it out so this one is now three quarters on the inside also and it's got a little bit of uh, wear on the outside which should help it stick inside that knuckle a little bit better.
All right, got some of my extra tube here and my inserts and conveniently it's an inch from here to here. I measured from here on the thread. So I want to be about three quarters of the threads into the insert. That way, if I need to tighten it, there's room and then it takes a lot of loosening for it to completely separate. That way no accidents happen, but we were 46 inches from the end of the thread insert to the end of the thread insert. So I just have to cut it right here, make sure I have one left hand and one right hand thread. That way we don't have to take it off to loosen or tighten it. We can just loosen the lock nuts and then we can rotate it and it'll spread the tires out or bring them in. Then we can lock them back up again. So I'm gonna cut this tube, weld in these in inserts. I'm gonna make sure that I leave rod end in there. That way there's less of a chance that it's gonna get uh, warped in there and then can't thread anything in or out of it and at least the rod will be where we need it if it does get seized up. I don't know what I did, but I ended up cutting this thing like an inch too short. So you could see this tire's got some toe in. This one's pretty much straight. So I cut this thing too short somehow. You can see there's even gap right there, but the good news is I have another one and that's gonna be the one for the drag link. So that one's gonna be shorter anyways. Thank God I didn't mess up the second one. This is where we're at now. Everything welded up and you can see this is a super beefy attachment now. Cause this is like three eighths, quarter inch, and then welded all the way around, super beef. The one I'm worried about now is this. This is quarter inch with a three sixteenths plate on the side. And you know, my thought the whole time with this has been, well, people run these single shear all the time. I'm gonna be running a double shear. It still goes through the knuckle. So even if this broke off, you know, it'd still be bolted right here. Here. So it's not like it's gonna be a catastrophic failure, but that's not how I like to roll things I want it to be strong and not have to worry about it So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this all apart again Get the wheel off and I'm gonna try to weld on the inside of it But this time I'm gonna make sure I get it nice and hot because the last time I got it hot and I didn't really measure the temperature or anything I'm like, let's just start welding. That's not how you can handle it with uh, knuckles You really got to get it to the right temperature. So I'm gonna do it again I'm gonna probably try to get it up to around 500 and then uh, I might add another plate on the top here and then weld this whole thing from the inside just to make sure we actually are getting a good connection there. Next time I take apart this uh, hub and knuckle, all that, I'll put another plate on the outside here and weld it up there. But yeah, I'm having a hard time uh, wanting to do that right now because a lot of this just seems like overkill, especially after this bad boy. Some additional beef up on the top welded the inside and got this other side nice and hot extra plate on the top and then once again welded the inside in there so hopefully that's going to be strong enough now this driver side i'm not that worried about um, the ram is going to be pushing really hard on the passenger side and then you know my drag link is connected to the knuckle via the passenger side so this is the side I want to keep an eye on. I'm going to let these cool off. Um, I wish I had a way to wrap them up. I've got that welding blanket, but I don't think that's going to help much. Pretty warm out today, so I'm hoping these will just cool down nice and slow. I'm going to get my drag link jam nuts on there and then uh, start to measure that. And then we'll see how this thing comes back together. I'm going to run it for a little bit unpainted just in case, but I did pick up some Seymour paint to throw on it eventually. I'm not sure if I'll get to it in this video, but yeah, we're almost there.
forgot my phone. Should go for a test drive without your phone. Take a little trip to the gas station and see how she does. So far, it feels really smooth. I mean, there is like no slop in the tires, in the steering wheel whatsoever. Hold on, little buddy. That's lost here. Well, there we go, guys. I think that's pretty much it. Everything's feeling good. Got my beefy Pittman arm. Got my double shear add-ons to these Dana 44 Wagoneer knuckles over there. And then this beefy monstrosity that connects it all. This is kind of the craziest part right here. Like This part looks nuts. Got the ram pushing that way, the drag link pushing that way. And I think the coolest part of this steering setup is that these are so low and parallel because when this pushes on the tie rod, it's not wanting to spin as much as it would if you had some angle on it. When you pushed, it would want to spin the tie rod down. And then when you pulled, it would want to spin it up. So I think we're kind of minimizing that with how low it is. But yes, this still hangs down pretty low. Overall, I am pretty happy with the product. It took me quite a bit of work to get that done, but um, I am gonna leave it bare for now because I just ordered a case of Seymour's new stainless black. It's like a version of steal it because I have some fenders to put on the back, um, some flares to put on the back, a tire carrier. We got a lot of cool stuff coming. I just don't have the time to do it. And I kind of need to do it in the right order. So uh, I'm not gonna paint these for now because I want to test out that new Seymour paint. And uh, yeah, stay tuned to follow that. If you want to see this, videos like this, the videos that are going to come after this, check out the YJ Build playlist. You can see a bunch more, pretty much everything I've done on the street. Thanks for watching this video, guys. See you in the next one.